I was politely asked to make a video for security on desktop usage on FreeBSD. Now, this isn't a comprehensive list. There will probably no doubt be solutions and options which I haven't covered. And this really isn't for servers either. It's really just for desktop usage and how you can make your desktop a little bit more secure. Right, first we do we enter root. And this particular way of doing root will be uh, sorted out later if you stay tuned to the video. But first, if we type sysrc to add an entry to rc.conf, and if we put firewall underscore enable equal yes, that will enable the firewall at boot time. And it's changed from no to yes. Again, if we put sysrc firewall underscore quiet, equals yes. That will just stop all the text from appearing on screen and any prompts that might uh, delay us really. Again, you can see it changing from no to yes. So you know that it's actually being entered correctly. Next, sysrc firewall underscore type equals workstation. And that's really just for if you just got one single machine uh, to protect. You're not protecting the rest of the machines on your network. It's just this one that you're using uh, right now. Next, uh, it's firewall underscore logged. Deny equal yes. Ah, oh, I forgot to put sysrc. Oh well, just retype it. So sysrc firewall underscore log deny equals yes. And what this will do, it will uh, it will log those who are denied access because I've the lack the SSH key because they're hitting a port that we haven't enabled, etc. So you know, just to make sure that you know what's going on. Next is sysrc firewall. Next is sysrc firewall underscore my services. And here, say for instance, you're running a, uh, I don't, you, perhaps you want to run a web server or, uh, you know, because you're running a home lab, then you can include them here and it'll allow them to pass through the, the firewall, as it were. So if you just put at forward slash tcp 443 and 22, etc. Next, if you put sysrc firewall underscore allow services, equals any oh i didn't put any speech marks out doesn't suppose it matters and what this will do it allow any uh, external addresses to make use of the uh, services that we've allowed in my services right so if we just uh, start the firewall there we go so uh, now rules are loaded and it should be all running nicely and to have a look at the rules that we've uh, and if you just want to have a quick check of what's uh, in the rule set how it's configured etc if you just put ipfw hyphen a and then just list and it will just show you what's uh, what's allowed what's not allowed etc it's just how really the the way that it's set up there is that you can manually uh, configure these yourself of course but uh, not in this video that's another one for another day this is really just uh, the rules that were defined under the workstation definition and the ports that we allowed uh, my services oh real and yes well this is what i should have done before we started the firewall you know if you wanted to check the uh, the rc.conf entries to make sure everything's uh, going to work properly, including the spelling mistakes, etc. If you just cut the rc.conf and grep uh, for firewall, you can see that the... Uh, I've got two entries there, interesting. Um, there you are. So it's, it's as we typed, it looks perfectly fine. And to check the status, it tells you that IPFW is enabled. So we have a nice little, uh, very simple, but effective firewall going. To do a bit of system hardening on FreeBSD, many of these options really should be chosen um, at install time. You may see in a screen that uh, gives you a whole lot of uh, different options to choose from. You can choose all of them if you wish, it's not going to hurt. Um, but here I'm going to show you how you can enable them Post installation, if perhaps you forgot or you didn't include all the ones that you wanted to, or indeed want to undo some of the ones you did. So what we need to do is, you can do this two ways. You can make an entry so it's permanent in the sysctl.conf, uh, and they'll be there every every time you boot up. Or you can enable them on the fly using sysctl, uh, and then the actual options. And I'll show you now. So the first one we're going to do is sysctl. And this is what you do every time. So sysctl security.bsd c underscore other user IDs equal zero. 
And what this will do, it will stop uh, users from seeing information about processes owned by other users, really. And you can see it's changed from 1 to 0, which means it's now off. As I say, you can do these ones at boot time. If it, You can do these ones at uh, install time. It makes it easier. But like I say, if you forget or you change your mind, then you can do it now. So the next one we're doing, I'm just going to copy that so I don't have to type it all out again. And the second part to it is underscore GIDS or GIDS, as uh, I like to say, equals zero. So there you are. Let's uh, change that. And the next one is security.bsd.unprivileged underscore read underscore message buff. And this prevents unauthorized users from reading kernel buffers. So we set that to zero. And next, security.bsd.unprivileged underscore proc underscore debug equals zero. And this disables the user from uh, the ability to see debug messages, in case that's what you want. The next one that we're going to do is we're going to randomize the PID or the PID. Uh, of newly created processes. It just uh, it, it just introduces some r randomness, which uh, when we start up a new one, uh, a new process, instead of just bumping it up by one at a time. The next one is security.bsd.stack underscore guard and then underscore page. And that will uh, stop any attacks against a stack overflow, etc. Although I have seen some reports that if you enable this, it can perhaps cause some trouble with some uh, Java implementations, but... Um, you know, use it at your own discretion. This next one is security.bsd.c underscore jail underscore proc equals zero, which will prevent users from uh, seeing the processes running in jails. The next one is just simply clearing the, the temp file system on startup. Next is disable opening the syslog D network socket. So where we go syslog D underscore flags equals minus ss and the next one is we're going to disable the send mail services i mean obviously don't disable any of these if you need them but uh, really on a, a workstation uh, or a desktop you really don't need them uh, running in the background of course if you want to make these changes permanent then you add them to the sysctl.conf file and they'll be there next time the system boots Next, up, what we're going to try and do is limit root access. Really, you should only only have root if and when needed. And usually you uh, have a normal user that elevates themselves up to root or on a temporary basis. So you don't log in as root. So what we're going to do first is limit uh, root access to SSH. Where it says, it's hashed out by the way, but it says permit root login no. Get rid of that hash. So you just save it and that's it. This is, of course, assuming that you've got SSH running on your machine. Um, if you have, then you just need to restart the service. So uh, I'm just going to put restart. There you go. With a new rule set, so root should not be allowed to log in, which you don't want that anyway. Now we're just going to make some changes to the, uh, the way that you can log into single user in FreeBSD. The default way is kind of insecure. And uh, we're going to try and make it secure. And this is the use of the word secure and insecure is a little bit um, topsy turvy in this part. It says, if the word secure appears, then this uh, console allows root login. And we don't want that. So we're going to mark each one as insecure. If the console is marked insecure, then the init will ask for the root password when going to single user mode. So you can't just go straight into single user mode. It requires you to have the root password, which is a lot better than the default. So you better make sure you don't uh, lose the root password. So we're just going to change each one of these. And yeah, I'm also going to um, disable these ones because we really don't need them. So just put hash in uh, front of each one. There we go. I think that's it. Next, we're going to change how you access root privileges. I normally, and this is kind of like bad practice, but I normally just put SU and then uh, just log into root and then exit when I finish. But a better solution would be to use doas. I mean, yes, you could use sudo, but I prefer doas. What we need to do once we've installed doas, you need to go user local, etc. doas.conf, and then we'll set up uh, its behavior. You put permit, 
Uh, and this is really not recommended, but if you want it so you don't ask for a password every time, uh, no pass, keep end, keep environment, and allow users in the group wheel uh, in order to gain root privileges. And no pass again for keep environment, keep end, uh, root as root. So when we try to access uh, do as, it will elevate us to root privileges but won't ask for a password, which is not really secure. But a more secure way of doing it, and we start with a clean slate, if you put permit and then keep env and as user Christopher. Well, obviously your name is not going to be same as my name. And what that should do is that when we try to go into do as, it will ask for a password. So do as say for instance top, yeah, there's a password. So if you want to gain root privileges for the user Christopher, it's going to ask um, for a password instead of just giving you it. So good. So uh, so let's edit that file the proper way using do as and then ee for easy editor and then uh, etc. and then do as dot conf and we're just going to add to it. One useful feature, which I particularly do like, although, you know, some people are going to think, ah, it's, again, it's not secure, but it's, sometimes it's, uh, it makes life a lot easier if you can do this. You can allow Duas to ask for password on some um, elevation tasks, and for others, it will allow you to do that without having to put in a password. So, uh, for example, if you want to mount or dismount uh, some USB sticks or drives, etc. So if we add to the bottom part, if we add to permit, uh, no pass, so it won't ask for a password. And uh, Christopher. And then you can state the uh, tasks or applications that you want this to apply to. There's this particular no password required uh, thing too. That's what CMD for command and top and we'll save that and what it should do is i'll just start with next term so you can see a bit better we will try first we'll put do as h top so it should like say yeah, it's just asked for a password because that wasn't included very nice but when i ask for top it should just go straight into it there you go so you can state which either tasks or applications you would like root privileges for, but without the hassle of going into and asking for password, which is actually pretty cool. If you want to mount or unmount uh, drives or USBs, etc., you can just put these two. You can put them on one line, I guess, but I like to put a separate line. So you've got mount and you mount. So it gives you root privileges to mount and unmount without having to put in a password every time. Very nice indeed. So we're just going to go into do as and uh, keep it open as uh, root. <laughs> I suppose it defeats the object of the exercise in the last bit, but, you know, it's uh, for convenience. So we do a package update. Um, it's up to date now, yes, pulled it in, and also if you want to make sure that your CPU code is up to date, so you're going to install dev CPU data, so if there's any uh, security issues with the uh, Intel CPUs, which we all know there are, this will help mitigate the problems. And then if we put sysrc microcode micro under slash update, under slash enable, yes, it will load it at boot time, I've already got mine set up to yes anyway. Some of the text at the bottom is missing. I'll just uh, expand it in a minute. So we've got service microcode update start. Once that's done, if it just says done at the end, that means there was no new code for your CPU. But if you get a whole raft of text floating up, which probably means that it's uh, been applied. Another one that we can do is to check whether or not the Spectre um, 
variant two. I didn't know there was a second one. A Spectre variant two uh, mitigation has been turned on for your system and put in sysctl hw dot ibrs underscore disabled will check that no it's not being disabled if you put hw dot ibrs uh, underscore active it's telling you that the mitigation is enforced which is good and if we just have a look for um what's available in sysctl and um, we grep pmap.pti will show whether or not the uh, meltdown mitigation is enabled and it is if you want to change whether it is or not switch them on and off if you get performance problems uh, if you go to your bootloader.conf and then you put vm.pmap.pti equals one or zero or if you want to turn it on and off then that's where you put it as well as your um IBRS, if you want to disable or enable that, um, you can put it like there. Although I do recommend you just, just have them on. Better to be safe than sorry, I think. And one final little tip is always keep your system updated. So with FreeBSD, it can't be any easier. Just put FreeBSD hyphen update fetch. It will bring in the latest uh, security patches and updates, etc. In this case, there's no new ones. And if there were, then you just put uh, install where it fetches and you're good to go. And update the packages as well for the latest ones. And uh, that's really it for your desktop security. There's probably some that I've forgotten. And if there is, I'd appreciate it if you would let me know in the comments section down below. But anyway, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you next time. This and every other video on my channel has been made using FreeBSD and open source software.